So, yeah. It's not easy to change, I imagine. It is not easy to change. Changing agents is like changing spouses. <laughs> it's very similar. The breakup can be very harsh, and you will never be rid of them as long as the contract is, you know. You can get new agent for new contracts, but the old agent will still handle all the stuff for the contracts they have worked on. So how do you find out whether your agent's that kind of person or not? You just, no dating then, you just arrange well, marriage. Well, no, it's, yeah, it, there's a bit of arranged marriage thing. Though when they call you on the phone and say, hey, you know, you find out how well you interact with them. This is why it's so good to have gone to conventions and seen them and met them and gone to their coffee clutches and chatted with them and, you know, all of this stuff. Um, you can also email their authors and say, hey, this agent's thinking you pick me up. What, you know, can you tell me a little bit about what style of agent they are? Um, and you can, yeah, you can interview agents. If you've got a, a book offer in hand, you get a little bit more versatility for picking an agent if you do want to go with an agent. Uh, Dan actually did this. He had several agents. He had the book offer from, from Tor, and so he went to a couple of agents and talked to them, and he went with uh, a certain agent, um, and not Joshua, because Joshua's style would not have matched him, though he called and talked to Joshua. So, so did you, uh, is that how you found out about your agent? Um, Joshua, I met at the Nebula Awards one year, um, doing what I've been telling you guys all the week. Mark, do you want one? Okay. Um, and he represented a few authors that I liked, Simon Green and Elizabeth Moon, both of whose books I've read quite a bit of. And when I sent out a flock of queries. He was the only one who replied. Um, and when I sent out books <coughs> to agents and editors, he was the only one who actually responded. Um, and so I didn't have a lot of options. <laughs> but I also very much respected the fact that he got back to me. He rejected me four times um, on four different books. <coughs> um, but he, re he responded. Everyone else I got form letters from. Him, I got. You know, I think that I think you show a lot of potential. Here's what I think is wrong with this book. This is why I'm not going to represent it. Um, but I would like to see fu future books by you. I thought he was right. I never rewrote those books. I wasn't a rewriter. I probably should have, because um, he was kind of lukewarm, saying, "If you revise this, I'll take another look at it." But Joshua doesn't like the revise, and I'll represent it. Um, so he doesn't want to promise someone that. But I didn't know that. So I just sent him a new book. Um, I, I was writing them fast. Um, and so we'll get to this story now. Then I actually got a call back from Tor on a book Joshua hadn't seen. <coughs> and I was put in the position of, do I go get an agent or not? I did not want to handle the contract things on my own. I did not want to handle the, um, the arguing with the editors on my own. Yes, I had a contract in hand. Um, I wanted to spend my time writing instead of doing these things. And so I wanted an agent. And so I called up Joshua, and I said, I have an offer in hand. Or are you willing to look at the book? And he said, uh, yeah. Um, he read the book. He liked it. It was launchous. And he agreed to represent me at that point. And that's really all there is to the story. I didn't want to do all that stuff on my own. Some people doing all this stuff on their own or, you know, doing the, the hybrid route where you have an IP lawyer for the contracts, where you have an agent to do foreign sales, but only foreign sales, and you do everything else yourself, it's really exciting to them. Um, the other big reason that you would not want an agent is if you want to self-publish, which we'll talk about probably another day, because I don't know if we have time today. We'll see. Yeah. Um, this might overlap with earning out, mm -hmm. but if you is it in your best interest, money aside, let's yeah. say that no matter how much your advance was, you were going to put it in the bank, yeah. Is it in your best interest to get a high advance so that the publisher is more interested in your success? Okay. It's a good question. We'll, we'll, we've got enough interest in this. We'll talk about the earning out thing. So the way that a contract will work is you will get an advance. Brandon? Yes. I had a quick question back on the okay. subject. That might be. Uh, I was just wondering, so you, um, you said you called up Joshua once you had an yes. offer in hand. Does it give you kind of special privileges to contact an agent when you... Have a contract in hand? Yes. Contract. From a serious publisher? Yes. But Joshua had already started calling me at that point to give me feedback on my books, which was another big sign. I should have just been revising them. But um, in fact, right, actually, no, this happened about a month before I sold. Joshua actually called me and said, 
what I'm doing is I'm trying to get you to revise one of these books without making a promise to you. So go fix one of them and send it back to him. <laughs> he actually did that. Um, he says, I think you're really good. I think that you're writing these books too quickly and you're not revising enough. Um, and so, so yeah. <laughs> Josh was also, though, very personable as an agent, meaning he likes to be in contact with his authors. He, he calls every week, basically, to just touch base. He's not a cry-my-shoulder agent, but he is a... Um, I want, you know, he always wants to be in touch. So, 